Big astrological news. Lunar nodes leave Taurus and Scorpio and enter Aries and Libra in the middle of July, thus beginning a new cycle that will take us all the way into early 2025. With South Node and Libra, we will be addressing codependency, releasing people-pleasing tendencies, and any illusions we have in love or in our creative pursuits, while North Node and Aries will urge us to take risks, be brave, courageous, and follow our desires with full speed and passion. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. If you'd like to work with me, you can book a reading down below or check out my website anastasiadoesastrology.com. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment, I highly appreciate that and you hear me say that it also encourages YouTube to push my videos to the front of the line, which is very helpful for the growth of my channel. Before we dive in, I wanted to highlight one of my candles. As you know, I'm also creating products with astrological magic properties. So this one is Moonlit Trinity, perfect for anyone who's seeking romance, anyone who's seeking inspiration. It has the benefit of looking magical, it's pink, it smells like strawberries and cream, and it was created, it's called the Trinity because it was created when three planets were empowered. The sun was exalted in Aries, and the moon, exalted moon in Taurus, was conjoining Venus in rulership in Taurus. So it's especially lovely for anyone whose ascendant or Venus or the moon is in earth or water signs. So if you are, it, let's say your Venus is Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn, this is a must have, especially with Venus retrograde coming up. This could be a great addition, great source of calm for you. So before we talk about this nodal axis, let's talk about the nodes in general, right? What are the nodes? The nodes are points of intersection between the lunar orbit and the solar orbit, the ecliptic. So anytime we get the new moon or the full moon at those points of intersection, we get eclipses. And eclipses are big points of change, right? Because it's that intersection. Every time we hit an eclipse, we're sort of at crossroads, at cross section in our life. So they have this big significance. People, there's different schools of looking at the nodes. Modern astrology tends to look at it in a more black and white perspective where South Node is the past, it's something you're letting go, it's your gifts and the lessons you brought in, but you're really just moving towards North Node. And a lot of times South Node can be more negative versus North Node is more positive. That's where your Kind of gifts are right so like north node is the present the future the desire the drive the direction you're moving in while more hellenistic traditional astrology doesn't necessarily color them as broadly um it talks about finding balance between the two of them that's always the big lesson with the nodes you're always looking for balance you're never just dismissing one and saying one is good one is bad basically um, North node on the lunar, in the lunar path, right? Like the lunar orbit is tilted. So when the moon is climbing upwards and it crosses the solar orbit, that is the North node. And it has that energy of increase, the climb, the unknown. A lot of times North node is something we're not familiar with. So we're on the journey, we're excited, but we're also scared. We make mistakes, you know, there's, there's that like, energy of like rise of fortune, rise of um, desire, rise of ambition. Sometimes it can be taken too far. Like people who have their North Node conjunct Mars, they can go too far in reaching their desires. Lance Armstrong famously has um, used his North Node conjunction. I believe it's conjunct his Mars. And if you know, let me know in the comments below. But you know, he used his North Node energy to like gain through use of steroids and like breaking the rules. So North Node can also be quite negative depending on how you look at it. So then the South Node is actually the path downwards. So when the moon is already kind of reached the highest point 
and it starts to climb down. Um, and so the south node has that feeling of like, if you reach the peak of the mountain and you're climbing down, you already know, you know, you've accomplished things. You're not as excited. You're more kind of seeking rest and release. And so south node oftentimes has that energy of like release and transformation and maybe even a little bit of dissatisfaction. South node always urges us to choose spiritual pursuits or spiritual concerns. So that's it, that's the way that I sort of follow. And I like I like the idea of you need to balance the two, right? But just knowing that south node is diminish diminishes, south node diminishes, north node increases. And I also really like the Vedic, just to quickly mention, like the Vedic Rahu Kedu energy. Um, and the Rahu Kedu is the story of, a, of an evil dragon that was split in half and two sides of the dragon were put at different sides of the ocean. And so they circle each other, but they can never meet. And so Ketu is the bottom half of the dragon and the bottom half expels the nutrients or just, you know, poops it out basically and so k2 is that headless body that doesn't have a purpose and all it does is kind of it like purifies it releases right um and so it's interesting with libra south node going into libra purifying libra and topics relationships creativity connection looking at all of that differently and then Kate, the Rahu, Rahu or North Node is the head of the dragon, but it doesn't have a body. So it's hungry, but it cannot be satisfied. So that's where the danger of North Node comes in. We can be too hungry for North Node things. And so it's, it's with Aries, North Node going into Aries, just that desire to assert yourself also needs to be controlled and needs to be observed with patience. So we are coming out of North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio, started in late 2021, pretty much. We still, we're still gonna have one more eclipse in October um, in the, on the Taurus and Scorpio axis, but we're completing the cycle, right? For a while, we were, we're coming from the place of emotional turbulence, which is represented by Scorpio, into the place of material stability. Um, with Scorpio energy over the course of the last approximately two years, we had to face shadows, we had to face and process our trauma, address some secrets and shadows in our lives and our relationships so that we could open space for new ideas, for new resources, for new relationships, right? First, you had to process and say no to things. And it's interesting because um, we had the first eclipse in Scorpio in November 2021 and that was right around the time I was telling kind of saying goodbye to a short very short Scorpio fling I had um, it wasn't even like anything you know significant but I was like saying no to an actual Scorpio person um, and then later I met my current boyfriend and we are together for a while at this point and it's it's feeling very stable and very secure so I've definitely experienced that journey from Scorpio to Taurus and if you have please let me know and so the, the with the Taurus North Node we have leaned into more stability in our living situation in our careers perhaps in our self-expression some of us could have connected to pleasure and found ways to enjoy life a little bit more maybe even gone through sexual healing or some kind of intimate transformation because Taurus rules our bodies so finding ways to be more grounded to be more present and now starting July 2023 we actually already had the first eclipse in Aries in April 2023 but we are moving into this new cycle starting in July and it lasts the nodes will shift into Virgo and Pisces in January late January January 29th 2025 but the final eclipse will not happen until March 2025 and this shift is actually if you look at the mean node the mean node shift happens on July 12th 
And then the true node happens on July 17th. So that's why if you hear different astrologers give different dates, July 12th or July 17th, just know that it really depends on which node you're using. And mean tends to be more average. So the average date of entrance is July 12th. And then the true date of entrance, which is like super precise and exact, is July 17th here we go <laughs> so so with south node and libra south node and libra is all about us it's all about relating with people um if you're born with this placement please share with me how it resonates with you i'm born with this placement and there's just like a natural tendency to operate from a perspective of like getting being liked connecting with others sort of interacting and trying to give others whatever makes them happy right but the danger of course is becoming codependent is losing yourself or not getting your needs met because you're bending over backwards trying to satisfy the needs of other people so there is that there is that gift a lot of times with south node and libra of charm and great sense of aesthetics and kind of relationship orientation but like i said there might be dangers of people pleasing and codependency and even struggling to make decisions so when south node shifts into libra we will be examining our unhealthy relationship dynamics where are we giving too much where are we not giving enough where are we maybe being too you know self-oriented which is this feels like the opposite shift, but there are definitely people out there who tend to be more self-oriented. So for them, unhealthy relationship tendencies could be perhaps about prioritizing others. Um, but yeah, like, you know, see where do you identify too much with your partner? Where you worry too much about them? Where are you not pursuing your goals for the sake of hurting them or upsetting them or compromising your relationship? Where do you even need to speak up? Because North Node and Aries is all about self, right? And it's not self in a sense that it's selfish. Of course, in, in the shadow vibration of Aries, there could be an element of being selfish. But for the most part, it's like, how can you be the most youest you in a relationship, in a community, how can you see your gifts and your abilities and express them while still focusing on the whole? Because like I said, balance, right? You don't really wanna do North Node or South Node way too much and give up on the other. So becoming your true self, showing up in the world through taking risks, through doing things if you have, you know, if you have strong Aries placements, we just had Jupiter and Aries for a little bit, and it's very much just do it vibe. It's very much just go for it. So, so here you're exploring your passions and exploring things that you want to do without needing a permission, because the South Node and Libra side could be very much about um, asking for permission and worrying too much about not getting the permission. So here you're learning to trust your guts, um, learning to stop worrying about what other people think. Of course, ideally, you're still doing something in consideration of other people and you know don't do things that would hurt others, but kind of learning to be independent and self-reliant and trusting your intuition, also just being okay, okay with not needing the approval of others. So. I'm excited as a native um, North Node and Aries, South Node and Libra. It's going to be fun to see this as I am now aware of astrology. Last time it was happening would have been between late 2004 into 2006. And for me, this was the time when I started college and I was coming into my own I started going on dates I started I was like totally the leader of my pack of friends they even called us Anastasia and her buddies <laughs> so like Anastasia and company and um, it was a pretty it was a pretty good period of course you know there's always challenges nothing is ever just fun there's always something you have to address but it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing to do. And how you can also, more advice on how you can express the Aries energy is through sports, definitely through some kind of competitive, athletic action. 
um, maybe lifting weights, Aries, but be, be careful, get a trainer, don't do things that you're not aware of, right? But yeah, lifting weights, um, taking up martial arts, expressing that fighting spirit through controlled athletic activity or controlled athletic competition, um, going on adventures, learning to put your needs first and saying no when you don't feel like doing things, that will definitely help you evolve i think so let's talk about the 12 signs and see what can you expect if you are an aries rising south node is entering your seventh house while north node is entering your first house until march pretty much march 2025 is when we'll have the last eclipse in aries and let me know how has the last cycle between late 2004 and early 2000 and like late 2004 and into 2006 how has that affected you um so so south node in the seventh you are examining relationships you are very literally looking at your dynamics with friends with parents more most importantly romantic partners and you are feeling perhaps dissatisfied with the old way of doing things. Maybe you've been looking for people online and you're getting ready to take action in your own hands a bit much. Maybe you're getting ready to start going to um, going out and letting your friend who's in a relationship be your wing woman or something like that. <laughs> Maybe you are um, saying goodbye to a relationship that has been confusing. Maybe you've been in a situation show for a while and you are focusing on yourself. Of course, if you are in a happy relationship, this could simply be a period in which you tell your partner, like, I've spent all this time staying home with the children. How about I go back to school and you help me out, right? Like you either stay home or you hire a nanny or something like that, like the old, relationship patterns will need to change in order to bring forward a new version of yourself and let me know how has late 2004 2005 2006 how has your life changed have you become more aligned with your soul's desires have you made big changes in your life you could definitely expect opportunities to reinvent yourself to redefine yourself this could also be relationship development, but it's, it's more about who you say you are. If somebody asks you, who are you, right? How do you define yourself? Do you say I am an artist or do you say I'm an engineer? That, that answer of I am can very much shift. And I feel like as you go towards self-expression and as you satisfy your deepest desires you can also get stronger relationships because there is no a without b <laughs> i mean they are in an alphabet but not in this in this situation if you have a opposite b you got to take care of a in order for b to improve so focus on yourself get in touch with yourself improve your life um even, you know, even as simple, or maybe not as simple, but even as, as kind of a, an example that comes to mind is just the more you love yourself, the more happy you are in your skin, the better your relationships become. Because naturally people who are not on the same page as you are, they end up falling off and they end up sort of disappearing, right? While you are your confidence attracts confidence and strength so let me know how this resonates in the comments below if you are a taurus rising south node is about to go into your sixth house and north node is moving into your 12th and so taurus risings are definitely on this path of self-expression right uranus is still in your first house you're still going through that reinvention of self so now you're called to examine the sectors of your physical health and your mental health and with south node in the sixth there might be some kind of like everyday life things you have to address sixth house is the place it's the house of health but it's also the house of service to others it's the house of problem solving so with south node in the sixth 
there might be a sense of either you are releasing a lot of times I definitely see this as like releasing a need to work extra hard and because your north node is moving into the 12th house you're either starting to prioritize rest you're starting to prioritize meditation spiritual pursuits imagination creativity things that are more enjoyable potentially or things that are hiding right things that you're not acknowledging because in the sixth house we're like doing work every day and maybe we're doing things for other people because it's libra maybe we maybe we sort of prioritize relationships with colleagues and we show our colleagues a certain side of ourselves that's not anymore that's no longer true to who we are so there is a need to address these patterns of relating to colleagues these these patterns of relating to work and maybe letting work define you and being more willing to go aries is your 12th house and aries is where we're more willing to like take on a fight and act and be independent and 12th house is the place of mental health it's the so fighting mental health battles right addressing any negative tendencies you have um becoming a healer becoming a yoga teacher choosing an esoteric passion choosing tarot astrology and making that your life purpose instead of just doing work that pays the bills but doesn't satisfy there might also be a need to address any health matters like any habits that are not helping you things that you do every day that are actually disturbing your mental health and choosing choosing spiritual health and spiritual well-being is quite likely here and let me know if you've experienced anything like that between 2000 late 2004 into 2006 because that's the last time when south node was in libra and north node was in aries if you are a gemini rising south node is about to go into your fifth house with north node moving into your 11th house and last time we had this would have been in late 2004 early 2006 what happened in your life around that time especially according to all the things i'm about to mention let me know down there but south node in the fifth will make you look at the topics of romance creativity and children and with libra here there might be some codependency with your children or there might be some romantic tendencies that are not serving you good even even your relationship to pleasure and your relationship to having fun may need to be addressed and something will have to be released in order to help you with north node in the 11th in order to help you reach your goals and your ambitions you're very much going through a sense of detachment or rethinking the way you deal with love the way you connect with your children the way you express yourself and trying to find ways to kind of open up time and open up space in order to get more creative or get more get more not really like yes creative but in the 11th house it's 11th house is about your worldly ambitions it's about your status in the community it's about your what are you known for right so maybe you know maybe you have this tendency to sacrifice everything for your child right and with this transit for the next year and a half you are starting to make up some space for your goals like you hire some help or you ask your mom to watch your kid and you start a social media page and you share your insights and you share your topics and you kind of connect with the community i think stepping away from like perhaps you've been dealing with a lot of personal concerns lately but like needing to step away into the collective and needing to connect with others and to find people who are on the same page with you who are aligned with your calling who can be your tribe and support you and come with you on the adventures that are ahead is likely if you are a cancer rising south node is going into your fourth house and north node is entering your tenth so this is really big for your 
home, family life, and your career. And last time we had the same alignment would have been late 2004 into early 2006. So take a look back and let me know how has your family life changed or what happened in terms of your goals and ambitions and desires and ways of asserting yourself. In general, South Node in the fourth will need will will be the time when you are transforming, releasing, letting go of familial and healthy familial dynamics, especially if you have a tendency to self-sacrifice, to not speak up, to just keep peace for the sake of keeping peace. This would be a very much very much a period of standing up for yourself and expressing yourself. Some of you may move and change your living situation. Please let me know if that's the case, if you're planning to move in the comments below. While with North Node in the 10th, 10th house speaks to how we define ourselves professionally. People who do not work, it could be more about what are you known for in the outside world? What are your passions? What are your kind of what's your legacy right what's what's important to you what are you pursuing so with north node going into your 10th house i can definitely see changes professionally whether that means you're learning new things or whether that means you're maybe you're moving for a job right um with south node in the fourth releasing something in the home and going into the house of career traveling for work Watch out, watch out for like home and family matters can be a bit more complicated with South Node here. So make sure that you're not just escaping any challenges in the home or in your familial relationships and just working really hard to avoid them. It would be best to actually have some sort of balance. For my lovely Leo rising, South Node is about to go into your third house and North Node will enter your ninth house. And South Node, as mentioned before, has that energy of releasing, changing, rethinking, perhaps choosing more spiritual means of expression, but definitely a sense of needing to address, needing to process some things. And third house is your everyday communication. So with Libra, having Libra in your third house, you may really focus on expressing yourself in a very pleasant way, right? And sort of, um, choosing words and choosing things i just had a hair in my <laughs> in my eye and that was not fun um so so you're like looking at your way of thinking you're looking at your way of going through everyday life and perhaps examining where are you putting your needs second and that could mean changes in your relationship with siblings especially if you tend to be the one who's always you know giving your time but you don't feel like that's reciprocated this could also apply to your relationships with neighbors changing your style of writing but i think i also often see this as a way of examining even your even your approach to the things you tell yourself right like if you're someone who chooses chooses peace or chooses love above anything anything else perhaps with north node in the ninth you're going through some kind of mindset shift where you're starting to say that i want love love is important to me but i want to be most authentic my version of myself i want to be most honest i want to be most clear with what i desire so that people who come in my life they know who i am and and they don't see this kind of image I project, right? So, so like I said, with South Node in the third, definitely needing to examine, examine your relationships, immediate relationships, examine your everyday life, things you do that are perhaps oriented towards other people or are too friendly and too, I, like even even idealistic beliefs but like anywhere where you give too much of yourself to other people will need to be addressed and perhaps released right completing education completing a writing project i can also see here needing to take that knowledge you have and perhaps or the ideas you have and bring them into the ninth house where you are 
writing or like where you're publishing your work if you've been writing something north node in the ninth house could mean starting education it could mean traveling could mean changing your place of living living potentially but also definitely i think taking knowledge you have taking applied knowledge and ninth house is responsible for more conceptual knowledge or you know like you you take the knowledge and you bring it into the ninth house and it becomes a book so definitely publishing traveling education becomes more important to you maybe you are continuing on a journey you have started and expanding your career to involve more travel or to involve more maybe you become a teacher yourself right before you were someone who gathered knowledge and now you're ready to teach and um another thing that i think is important here is a mindset shift looking at how your beliefs impact your reality and becoming the person who writes your beliefs instead of letting other people influence it so coming more into your own is important here and let me know how has these areas of education communication travel um how any of this changed back in 2004 late 2004 2005 2006 when we last had north node and aries south node in libra if you are a Virgo rising, South Node is about to go into your second house with North Node going into your eighth house. And this is interesting. I'm a Libra rising, so I'm just finishing this up and I'll probably be talking from some of my personal experience. But South Node in the second sometimes means financial changes. Second house rules finances. It also rules your values. So let's talk about money first and then we'll talk about values. So with South Node in the second, North Node in the eighth, you will potentially be because you are releasing in the sector of your own money and you're investing in the sector of other people's resources so very literally this could be like here's some of my money give me a mortgage i'll get a home so making a big purchase is likely sometimes on a more negative this could mean releasing a job or losing a job so that you are getting supported by a partner by a spouse by the government if you're claiming unemployment so definitely some sort of shift between just being self-reliant independent versus starting to trust somebody else and this is where the topic of values can come in as well because you are examining your values and it's interesting though because with south node being in libra in your second house the value of relationship can change the value of um kind of you know codependency or really focusing on the other people can can change a little bit to a point where the north node is in aries you're starting to speak up you're starting to express what you actually need and it's still a relationship house so a north node in the eighth could be very much you are focusing on partnerships, you're focusing on joining forces with other people, but you're being a leader more so than the follower. So even if, even if for some reason you're letting go of a job and starting to rely on somebody else, I don't think it will be on the terms of like, you feel really down. I think you will be more confident and more secure. But I think in general, it's very much about about rethinking your give and take dynamics and something about the way you were making money or something about the way you were sharing resources or the way you were looking at relationships feels outdated and you really need to examine even embrace more vulnerability even be ready to take some financial risks and to to start some partnerships and kind of kind of explore what it's like to be the one who tells other people what to do because why not you can do it virgo risings and let me know how the last cycle affected you because last time we had north node in aries south node in libra would have been late 2004 2005 early 2006 so looking forward to hearing how it affected you now, if you are a Libra rising, this is exciting. We have, um, we, me and you, <laughs> we have South Node in the first house, going into the first house, North Node in the seventh. So I, I, you know, I tend to be positive. There's always, of course, challenges to every single transit, but we'll, we'll cover them. 
So South Node in the first means a sense of rebirth. You are going to go through a personal change. And that is actually not always easy because sometimes South Node in the first can reveal any health issues you have. It can, it's, it's, just, it's just very kind of, I think it makes a lot of sense because North Node is going into your seventh and there's new beginnings. There's a lot of focus on relationships. North Node in the seventh house of partnerships could mean business partnerships, could mean romantic developments, engagement, marriage, moving in with your partner, or a partner going through some kind of significant shift that is affecting you. Even a partner going through, you know, my boyfriend messed up his knee and he had one surgery, there's going to be another surgery, so there's been a lot of focus on him. And on one hand, it's great because our relationship is getting closer and stronger, but on the other, there's a bit of a sense of like, what about my personal pursuits? So it's really important to find balance. As you are leaning into relationships, you are focusing a lot on relationships. You really need to make sure you're not sacrificing yourself, which is actually what Aries North Node is about. It's about, yes, I want a relationship, I want things to move forward, but I also want to make sure that my needs remain heard and, and I remain seen and appreciated. And how appropriate with Venus about to go retrograde. Check out my Moonly Trinity and Venus and Libra candles to help you get through, you can also get an oil to help you get through the retrograde period. Starting July 22nd, it's almost here. So it's, it's just interesting because I can see a lot of Libra risings getting in serious relationships and getting married or getting engaged, but be mindful of how you, how you take care of yourself. Make sure you're not, because it's very easy for a Libra rising, I think, to lose yourself in a relationship. Um, so try to, try to be aware of all of this. Um, but hopefully, hopefully it's all the good stuff. I, you know, like I, I can definitely, I've seen time and time again when the nodes shift into seventh and first house that people experience really big romantic and business breakthroughs. So it's exciting, but I've also seen people get sick or feel lost professionally and like needing to kind of rethink who they are after the cycle. So everything needs to be balanced especially if you are a libra rising and please let me know how has this affected you last time because last time we had north node in aries south node in libra would have been in late 2004 until early 2006 and as a libra rising myself i started dating around that time and became a leader in my friend group so there were a lot of developments i think mostly it was good but there was some family challenges and certain things in which I was dealing with emotional kind of questions. So looking forward to hear what was happening in your life. If you are a Scorpio rising, South Node is about to enter your 12th house, so North Node is going to go into your 6th house. South Node in the 12th suggests needing to examine your blind spot, and you have Libra in your 12th house. And that is your blind spot. So I feel like there might be certain idealism, certain indecisiveness, certain people pleasing tendencies that you have that you may not even be super aware of because it's the 12th house and 12th house is dark. So needing to address those topics. A lot of times, you know, Sagittarius risings have had this for a while with Scorpio South Node. And I've seen people make really deep realizations about their relationships and their kind of, you know, love for drama or the way they sabotage their relationships. So similarly here, you may be addressing bad habits like negative self-talk or, you know, overeating, overindulging, even like drinking or having some kind of bad habits can come up for a review. And with North Node going into your sixth house, there might be gains in physical health. Like as you try to kind of address all of that mental 
habits and difficulties and that's not an easy process right north node stays in aries until january 2025 so as you address those mental battles as you find the mental battles you will need to ground yourself in the physical reality as you say goodbye to a bad habit of overeating let's say you're grounding yourself in exercise maybe you're starting to exercise every day and expressing that martial energy warrior spirit maybe you're going for work that is more aligned with who you are maybe you are kind of yeah like maybe you're making big choices for your health and kind of starting to choose to meditate or choose to eat healthy all of this i think will be important as you're facing spiritual questions right it could also be the time when if you've been if you've been sort of floating along and didn't really have a job or have been feeling a little lost with north node in the sixth house it may ground you it may actually give you a job and make you feel like okay now there is this big project because sixth house is always heavy and serious and long term and you're basically addressing that long term project and let me know how these topics were highlighted back in 2004, 2005, 6, when North Node was in Aries, South Node was in Libra, last time. If you are a Sagittarius rising, North Node is about to go into your fifth house and South Node is about to go into your 11th house. And South Node in the 11th, in the sign of Libra, will be the time where you are looking at your friendships and becoming very aware of the things you're doing the tendencies you have the patterns you have that are not healthy perhaps you really want your friends to be happy so you stay up late waiting for them or you kind of put your needs second and you or, or you really value what other people think too because 11th house would be very much like releasing the need to care um, I wouldn't advise that you completely not care and be like, I don't care about my friends. But there's definitely a sense of letting go of letting uh, letting go of other people defining your life. And with North Node in the fifth, there is new beginnings and gains when it comes to joy, when it comes to self-expression. Maybe you start hiking. Maybe you start rock climbing. It's also the house of relationships and like more romantic relationships, fun. Maybe you've been so reliant on other people's approval of your dating life and now you finally realize that you just want to explore and you want to go and date the people you want to date. So you start to make more decisions that are authentic to you and that are truthful to you. And even if it's uncomfortable at first, as it might be, they still feel right. It, it feels like you're doing the right decision, making right choices. So it could be a lot of fun. Um, North Node in the fifth house could also bring motherhood. And because the shift is happening from the house of worldly ambition and place in the collective to the house of personal goals and personal joy and personal pursuits. And personal pursuits can definitely include pregnancy or spending more time with your child or um, becoming a mother, you know, like getting married and maybe becoming a stepmom or something. But I think this could be a lovely period. Take me, take me, <laughs> take me back to um, think back on late 2004 into 2006 when North Node last was in Aries and South Node last was in Libra. What happened in your love life? What happened with your creative self-expression? Did you get pregnant? Did you have a child? What was going on back then? If you are a Capricorn rising, North Node is about to go into your fourth house with South Node entering your 10th. This is important because these are your angular houses. Angular houses are first, seventh, 10th, and fourth. And basically the most affected by this exchange are angular signs. So Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra risings. But that's TMI for just the Capricorn rising. But if you are a Capricorn rising, North Node is going into your fourth, South Node is into your tenth. With South Node in the tenth, we are feeling a sense of dissatisfaction and need to release and need to transform our careers. Because tenth house 
is your career, but it's also your what you're known for. It's it's what people think you do for a living, right? Or what people think you do every day. What what kind of your status in the world? And so with South Node being here, you may be ready to let go of a job, or you may be ready to start a new part of your career. Maybe you're kind of prioritizing home and family instead of career, or you're prioritizing working from home while before you really cared about being recognized and being seen professionally. North Node in the fourth can definitely bring gains in the family, like starting a family, it could mean moving, it could mean getting a mortgage and sort of planting roots um, and becoming more grounded. So professional matters and home matters will require balancing, right? There's, there can also be potentially some difficulty in the workplace and my Capricorn rising friend is a creative person. She's an actress and a writer and there is a writer strike going on right now. so very much so when work is unpredictable how can you ground yourself how can you create work for yourself or create peace for yourself you know redefine what peace is if you if you no longer have that stability or that kind of work life that you're used to how can you make your home be a peaceful and solid foundation so that everything feels more complete and balanced and let me know how has your family life and professional life changed Last time North Node was in Aries, South Node was in Libra, which would be late 2004 into early 2006. If you are an Aquarius rising, North Node is about to enter your third house, South Node is about to go into your ninth house. And South Node represents release, endings, changes, and ninth house is education, travel, legal matters, beliefs, and philosophies. So may, you may experience a sense of needing to let go in any single one of these. So maybe you're graduating. Maybe you are completing a trip. Maybe you've been away for a while and now you're ready to come home. Because it's the house of beliefs and philosophies, there could also be a sense that things you used to believe no longer work for you. You used to believe you have to work nine to five, or you used to believe you cannot be a business owner, and now you are transforming those beliefs. If you're a lawyer, I've seen people sort of feel dissatisfied with law, or if you're someone who deals in the realm of ideas, you may be ready to bring the ideas into fruition because North Node in the third house is very much grounded and physical. And so with North Node in the third, you're taking on writing projects, you're taking on communication projects, you're taking, you're starting a business, you're getting ready to maybe be more visible and more involved with the community because just being in the realm of ideas is no longer satisfying for you. So I can definitely see this as, you know, letting go of working in education, for example, to start a business or letting go of a legal job to become a teacher or something like that. Because both of these houses deal with education, but ninth house tends to be more higher education and third house tends to be more like early education. So there is a sense of kind of maybe you're moving from high from college education into earlier education but definitely i think like kind of stepping away from seeking the truth outside of yourself to getting more connected with the world around you to writing to being more involved with the community to taking your skills to the next level taking ownership of all the gifts you have and maybe offering them to the world i think this could be a very bright and brilliant time for your mind to even like stimulate your mind through writing through teaching through communicating starting a blog starting a podcast anything like that could be lovely and let me know how has your life changed um back in late 2004 early 2006 when we last had north node in aries south node in libra now, if you are a Pisces rising, South Node is about to go into your eighth house with North Node entering your second house. So these are houses of money and values. Second house represents your money and values and eighth house represents other people's resources. And with South Node in the eighth house, 
being the place of other people's resources, being the place of dependencies and debts and taxes and kind of spoken, unspoken agreements, you are going through a transformation there. And it could be a very literal transformation where you're paying off debts, where you are releasing certain agreements that have been holding you in place. And that's once again thinking of you know like debts but it could also be could also be like a sense of maybe you've been helping someone out and that has been blocking your growth potentially so with with north node in the second house you're stepping away of like relying on other people and you're starting to rely on yourself this could be the time when your finances st stabilize or you get a job for example and like maybe you become the breadwinner in the family south node in the eighth could be the time when your partner maybe is going through some kind of financial challenge let's hope not <laughs> as a partner of a pisces rising i don't want to be i don't want to be that person but there might be you know south node in the eighth there might be a sense that your dynamics or your sense of relying on other people is no more you you had some kind of agreement where your neighbor was walking your dog but you no longer they move out and they cannot walk your dog so now you have to even like you have to make more money to be able to hire someone to walk your dog that's an example but definitely like moving away also from south node in the eighth letting other people define your self-worth to becoming self-reliant to becoming financially independent to becoming the breadwinner um i keep i keep touching my microphone i hope it doesn't mess the sound if it does i'm sorry um but yeah like like kind of leaning more into your self-worth and becoming more contained self-contained and maybe you become competing with start competing with yourself and your income goes up and you sort of have a sense of increase financially right financial abundance i send it all your way take take some financial abundance and let me know how have your finances changed have you gone through some kind of um transformations have you released any dependencies any um agreements and need to rely on someone the last time we had north node and aries and south node and libra which would have been in late 2004 into early 2006 so let me know and have a great period of north node in aries south node and libra it's never easy i mean it can be but i i feel like you know we're gonna have a different sets of eclipses some lighter some heavier but I think if we stay mindful of other people in our life and choose to prioritize our goals, we can definitely have a good balance. We can find that healthy balance between give and take um, instead of giving all you have or taking all you can get, you can have a really kind of good, healthy flow. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.